Last year, I switched this Apple Studio display. I say switched, I said I ditched it for this BenQ monitor. Now, BenQ has another version of that one and well, stuff's about to get real. When I said last year that I ditched the studio display, that wasn't fully the case, obviously, because I'm a YouTuber and I make massive mountains out of molehills. It was kind of true because this studio display is no longer my main editing display. And that's because this BenQ PD3220U has been my main editing monitor, and I absolutely love it. However, there's a new version of this which is in that box over there, and it's called the PD3225U. And BenQ have made some very interesting changes. So the plan is to put that second monitor onto this desk and have it as a second monitor. But to do that, I need to do some rearranging because at the moment I'm using the 14 inch MacBook Pro as my second display and it's a bit small. So while I do a very exciting unboxing of this new monitor and sort out that space over there, I'm gonna tell you all about the PD3225U. This video is sponsored by BenQ, but every single opinion you're about to hear is my own, including the problems with the previous version. As great as the PD3220U is, there are a couple of elements that BenQ needed to address, and these were made abundantly clear by you guys. The first was the brightness. At 250 nits, it wasn't exactly pushing the boundaries of what's possible with display technology, even if in everyday use, and certainly for my use case, any perceived efficiency is rather tricky to spot. Then we had the sharpness and in true YouTube commenting style, a concerning number of people completely misquoted me. I never suggested that the BenQ was sharper than the studio display because it isn't. What I did say is that it is surprisingly sharp given the resolution. Then we have the design of the PD3220U, which is rather utilitarian and probably not to everyone's taste. That said, I do like how purposeful it looks and the fact that it always looks ready for action. Then we have the speaker system, which I didn't mention in the previous review because I don't use them. But I can can confirm they're not a patch on the studio display speakers, but then nothing is. Okay, onto the spec differences, and the 32-inch UHD LG display in the new monitor is now IPS black rather than regular IPS. And that promises deeper blacks thanks to better liquid crystal properties and minimized light leakage. The brightness is now 400 nits. The contrast ratio is 2000 to 1 up from 1000 to 1. And that speaker system has had a boost as well. It's now 2.5 watts rather than 2 watts. There's been a few environmental improvements, including the housing of the monitor, which is now made from 85% post-consumer recycled materials. The price, £1,099 in the UK, which is still nearly 500 quid cheaper than that studio display. Done. So I now have the PD3220U here. That's the one that I've been using for the last few months. And now next to it, the brand new PD3225U here. Immediately, it feels like I'm working at NASA and I love this little spot here for the 14 inch MacBook Pro. That, that happened completely by chance, but it's made for it. This setup is all about video editing and that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna spend some time, basically the rest of the day, using this PD3225U just to see if those changes that BenQ has made have made a difference. But obviously for you guys, it's gonna be a few seconds. Since unboxing this new BenQ monitor yesterday, I've been using it for video production and it's wonderful. People did not believe that I switched from the studio display to the PD3220U last year. I really did. I loved the image quality, I loved the sharpness, even though I'd gone from 5K to 4K, that didn't matter. The brightness was never a problem, I don't use the speakers, so that didn't matter either. I just loved the image quality and the size of that display, and the new one with the IPS black panel is better. You do get richer blacks and that does make a difference when it comes to contrast and editing video. That's really important for my work. You do see a difference with the blacks. They're definitely deeper, they're definitely richer. There's more contrast going on, which for me as a video editor is very important. And that MBook color mode, which means it matches the color profile of the MacBook Pro as closely as possible is, it, well, it's really reassuring that I'm working with the right colors. It also has something called AQ color and it does have a wider 
colour gamut than the previous version, which if you're really into colour, if you're a colourist or you're someone who really, really takes an interest in that stuff and you do a lot of design work that demands accurate colour, that's important. I just think that the PD3225U, even though I wish it had a snappier name, is an example of a monitor that's affordable and that gives people like me just enough functionality and just enough reassurance that the colour and the image quality is enough to do video editing on, along with the fact that it has that hidden depth, all of those different colour profiles for the people who really, really need accurate colour reproduction. If that's you, but you don't want to spend 1500 quid on an Apple Studio display, this makes so much sense. As for that speaker system, it's definitely louder and a bit richer than the previous version, but again, I use headphones and anyone who's using this professionally, I don't think will be using the speakers. Let's talk about the design of the PD3225U, and as you can see, it looks identical to the previous version. It's utilitarian, but in a really good way. Bearing in mind, for me, this is a video editing station. I want it to look professional, and I think BenQ have nailed that. More importantly, it's still tilt, swivel, pivot, and height adjustable, which means you can set this monitor in pretty much any configuration you want. And let's be honest, you can't do that with the studio display unless you spend more money. In terms of connectivity, we get two HDMI 2.0 ports, a display Display port and two Thunderbolt 3 ports. There's also a bunch of USB ports, including USB C and USB A, which basically turns this into a USB hub. But one of the best things about this monitor is that you need just one cable between the monitor and your MacBook to charge your MacBook, send the image, and gain access to all of those ports. And if you're wondering how I've connected this second monitor, I've daisy chained it from this one. So basically, I have one cable going from the MacBook to the new PD3 225U and then a Thunderbolt cable going from that monitor to the PD3220U and it just works. And that means there's still just one cable coming out of the MacBook. The PD3225U is also compatible with BenQ's Display Pilot 2 software. That includes color mode switching, dual view for showcasing design side by side. Remember, this is a very design focused monitor. And on that note, print assist for previewing projects in actual print size and loads more features features, including the ability to change the colour profile on the monitor. In the box you'll also find the Hotkey Puck G2, which can be placed on your desk and used to control colour profiles and things like the sound and the brightness. And yes, you can control the brightness of this monitor via the Mac keyboard. If you know me, you know that I love simple conclusions, and the PD3225U, <laughs> this new BenQ monitor, is abundantly easy to recommend because one, it's affordable. Two, the image quality is fantastic. Three, those changes have made a big difference. Compared to the previous version, it's definitely brighter and the blacks are definitely richer. Four, although 5K would be fantastic, 4K on this monitor is so sharp. And five, although it looks the same as the previous version, that's not a bad thing because it's built like a tank and it is so easy to set up and it's so configurable. I cannot recommend this new BenQ monitor enough and I love my new NASA setup. If you've still got some time and you wanna hear my thoughts on the computer that's powering this massive workstation, the 14 inch MacBook Pro, keep watching for a link.